Somebody asked me how I felt about Kamala Harris. You know what? Kamala Harris has a hidden superpower that I just didn't realize. There are two things that I've been saying over and over again that I think are still true, but they manifested in a way that I couldn't, I didn't foresee, okay? One was that the Republicans have become increasingly unhinged since 2016. Just fucking crazy, all right? And number two, and I, I, I'll stand by this till the day that I die, Biden is not, he doesn't have a strong enough, like, demeanor to super hate him or super love him. He really doesn't. And Re Republicans are like, no, he's super hateable. Cause no, he's really not. He's not. The gaffable, you know, goofy kind of dude. That, like, there's a reason why they had to replay that one shot over and over and over again of the red light in the background. It's just really hard. He doesn't inspire a lot of, you know, super de devout loyalty, and he doesn't inspire a lot of hatred. He really doesn't. The Republicans had to really try. Okay. However, with those two things being true, now you bring in Kamala Harris, and there are two issues. She's got two minority statuses here, being a woman and black, that I was like, ooh, that's, no, that's a lot to you know, work with, you know, individually maybe, but together, I don't know, I guess we'll see where America's at on that. But what Kamala Harris is going to be really, really, really good at doing is showing how f***ing insane conservatives have actually gotten over the past eight years. Um, that was a hidden power that I didn't expect. The sexism and the racism, I wasn't ready for it to be that overt. Uh, yeah, like a retard magnet. I was like, damn. But then I'm like, well, if the Republicans have become more unhinged and they've only had Biden to go off of, Maybe if you give them Kamala, maybe they will. Yeah. That being said, this is um, from like looking at Twitter and stuff. So maybe real life politics isn't as disgusting or gross as. And there's the DEI press secretary telling you that the DEI vice president is the future of the party here. And so the future looks kind of dim for the Democrats here. But this is no shocker either. Camilla Harris, she's the original hawk to a girl. That's the way she got where she is. And uh, the party's going downhill if it's in her hands. That was tough. That, yeah, was, that, that, was, really was, tough. that was harsh. I am all here for it. Um, I am all here for it. I, I don't know if conservatives realize it, but the... As somebody who is 35 years old, I will say this. I feel pretty true about it. The conservative party, in terms of what they represent, has become significantly less sexist and less racist than it was 15, 20 years ago. Significantly so. And I think as a result, I think it's widened their voter base a bit. I think that you, you saw, you know, Trump did is historically good with blacks and Hispanics and all this. For them to go down this road is so stupid and unnecessary. Like they are destroying themselves if they think that they can go back to the old sexism like the early, early 2000s and not have any, con it's so stupid. Like, why would you have, why would you do this? It's so dumb. Um, it's so dumb. But hey, I'm all here for it. Example of 2000s racism. Um, I think that the way that, <clears throat> I think if you listen to the way that conservatives, especially on Fox News, would talk about black people, would talk about thugs and gang and rap culture and everything having to do with coming out of that world of like black entertainment, the way that conservatives would focus and talk on it, it just, you had this feeling of like extreme vitriol and derision. It was just, ugh. it's, I don't feel it as much listening to Modern conservatives doesn't seem to be as much a staple of like the modern conservative movement. Maybe because rappers all became cool with everybody. Like everybody likes Kanye West, right? You, like the new age of racist, you know, people like Nick Fuentes are huge rap fans. <laughs> you know, like it, rap was just, rap and hip hop were too powerful and they permeated culture that, you know, traditionally might have hated people, which is impossible to. Um, but yeah. I, 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 but, but for them to do this Kamala Harris shit, it's going to walk them back a lot. I think it's going to be real dumb. Can you explain, like, I'm five, why everyone I talk to says that Kamala is really unpopular? Um, just because she didn't do that well in the primaries. But, I mean, it's, I mean, the primaries, I don't know what, what's that supposed to matter. But 
Serious question, do you think the whole delayed dropout was a coordinated plan to get the heat off of Kamala, or did this just happen to work out perfectly for the Dems? Um, I mean, maybe it will end up working out perfectly. I mean, it's still early, so it's still to be seen. But I do think that the Republicans have f***ed themselves in a few ways. One was the incredibly heavy fixation on Biden's age and senility. Um, and then two is how unhinged in general the Republicans have become. And then three is the lack of an actual platform for the Republicans to run off of. So as the Republican machine has become more racist and more sexist, like obviously you see that coming out against Kamala in ways that I think even conservatives are a bit surprised about. I don't know if conservatives really thought that people would be this unhinged because I don't think most conservatives, I don't think it's effective messaging. I don't think it's good. I don't think most conservatives are on board with that. Um, despite how unhinged uh, like many lawmakers and people on Twitter and social media and everything are being. That's one. The second thing is, if Biden's age and senility had become a focal point um, for your messaging, and now you've replaced him with somebody who's 20 years younger, now Trump is the old one. That hurts a lot, I think. Well, I don't know. It'll, it's to be seen how much that hurts. But oof, that is like super taking a lot of the wind out of your sails. Because now Trump is going to be the oldest candidate in all of presidential history if he serves his term out, right? Um, actually, wait. He might be the oldest candidate running for president now if Biden didn't technically run in this election. I think that would make him. How old is Biden? Is 81. If Trump is within four years of age, which he is, yeah. So Donald Trump will be the oldest person ever running for president in the entire history of the United States of America. Um, which, again, like, doesn't matter, doesn't matter, who knows. But the fact that they made it matter means that now it kind of does matter, right? That's like a, that's, oof. Um, so that sucks. And then the fact that conservatives have no platform means that a lot of their, a lot of the messaging from Republicans was attacking not only the senil the senility and everything else, it was attacking, um, like Hunter Biden, right? All of that is gone now. You will never, ever, ever hear Burisma come from their mouths ever again. So Burisma, crack cocaine and white cocks are now absent from the Republican vernacular. And now you're in an area where it's like, okay, well, so we have a woman, okay. Well, she's a bitch, and she's an N-word at least, okay. So we've got that, okay. Well, okay, our, partner, our party's not 100% on board with that. Um, she's also, um, uh, okay, well, we have, um, 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 Hunter Biden, Bur what was it? It was Hunter Biden, Hillary's emails, Burisma, Joe's old. Um, uh, yeah, I feel like that's, I feel like that's where the Republicans are at right now. It's like, <laughs> but I don't know. We'll see. Who knows? Yeah.